So uh, hello, my name is Greg, and I wrote a static blog generator. Um, I wrote it because uh, I have been using uh, Google Blogger to do blogging uh, for a while, but uh, I found the formatting to be a little fussy using the WYSIWYG uh, uh, mode, and the raw HTML mode was not so great, especially if the HTML was created by the WYSIWYG mode. Um, I also didn't like the options for including fragments of source code in a blog post and having them not line wrap and be colorized nicely. And finally, earlier this year, uh, I was a little grumpy that Google decided to uh, retire Google Reader. And so if I could find something that didn't involve Google, uh, I thought that would be a nice plus. So uh, there is a system you can use to do a static blog and write posts in, in Markdown, and it's called Octopress. Unfortunately, somehow, I was not so successful in installing uh, Ruby on OS X. I, I did later figure out how to install it, but at the time, it slowed me down just enough to, to think, you know, with Racket, uh, the installation experience is really simple. It, you know, you download one file, you, you run it, maybe on Linux, you answer four questions, and then you're off to the races. So it's unicorns and lambdas all the way down. So I thought to myself, well, how hard can it be to write a static blog generator? I mean, that can't be very difficult. And the static blog generator part of it was actually not too bad. One of the supporting pieces was a little trickier, which I'll talk about later. So anyway, the design goals are, uh, were what you would expect for a static blog generator, uh, generate files for a static uh, web server. For example, using GitHub pages, you can commit and push to, to GitHub, and they automatically appear on the web. Maybe you would copy the files to Amazon S3. Maybe you would use a traditional web server, like Racket Web Server or Apache, uh, whatever. The other uh, idea was to write the blog posts in Markdown, uh, which I like for uh, <coughs> writing prose. Um, use Twitter Bootstrap for all the decisions about how the CSS scaffolding should work and also Twitter Bootstrap, especially version 3, which just came out a month ago, is great for doing responsive, so-called responsive web design. So, it, it, you know, the, the layout is something on a big desktop screen. If it's a tiny phone, it reflows, and, and you can adapt in other ways. And finally, use Pigments to do the highlighting of the source code. Pigments is a, a really big library with lexers and colorizing, uh, uh, kind of tokenizing for many, many languages. So the generated files are what you would expect. One HTML file for each of your source posts, uh, a bunch of indexes for all your posts, and one per tag, uh, feeds in both Atom and RSS format. And also, uh, it doesn't have to be blog posts. You can plop arbitrary source files in an arbitrary directory structure, and Frog will find them and convert them to HTML uh, using the overall uh, page template. And it will also generate you know, search-friendly things like the sitemap.txt. So if you were using the Markdown format, it might look something like this. The first few lines are some metadata, or what other systems call front matter, uh, title, date, tags, and then your blog post. And by the way, if you need some arbitrary lorem ipsum text for, uh, for a presentation, I highly recommend my favorite web service, which is bullshitipsum.com. And you give it a number of paragraphs, and it will give you uh, some lorem ipsum with sort of tech, techie phrases. So. Uh, very handy. So uh, the early version of Frog, the only source format was Markdown. And basically, the page layout was a hard-coded X expression in Frog itself. You could control its behavior a little bit with a few configuration variables. So after a few months, uh, I made a couple changes. One was I added support for scribble format. Uh, and also, now the page layout uses Racket Web Server template. Uh, and so you can write what looks like a, a normal HTML file, but within there, there can be little ed expressions referencing variables that are included in the environment in which the template is evaluated. And also automatically included for you are, is a little library of functions to do things like, you know, add a Twitter uh, follow button or a plus one button or a Google plus one button, uh, discus comments and, and so on. So, you know, you, you've seen HTML, this is HTML. The dark orange bit at the top is a comment in ed expression syntax, so that will not flow through into the HTML file. The yellow bits are different uh, variables. 
uh, all, almost all of these variables are simply strings. What's the title of this post? What are the keywords? The last one at the bottom is a little more interesting. That is actually a variable that is a function you can call. And you pass it your Google Analytics account number and the domain. And it inserts all the gory JavaScript to do Google Analytics tracking. So you know, any kind of template system uh, helps separate the, the things you need to vary from the boilerplate and is a better solution than you know, putting in comments, be sure to replace this with your account number. Um, and things like mustaches and whatever are neat. What's really neat about uh, ad expressions is if you need arbitrary racket code, you can plop that in here too. So if you need a con statement to make it behave differently, depending on what the URI is, you, know, you can do that as well. So frog depends on a couple other uh, libraries. One of them is a little lang that I made called lang rapture, which uh, is inspired by a couple idioms I like from Clojure. Yeah, it was totally ripping off parts of Asumu's lang closure, but where there's a conflict between racket and closure, I'd prefer the racket way. And this was not really necessary to do frog, but it enables a style of writing code that I like. Uh, particularly where you have very deeply nested function calls and you can kind of flatten those into a, a pipe or a data flow type of order. The library I definitely needed and did not find on uh, Planet was the Markdown parser. Uh, there is no Markdown parser written in, in Racket. So one flaw to my how hard can it be uh, idea was, was this. I considered doing an FFI wrapper of Sundown, which is uh, a, a great uh, markdown parser written in C. Um, very fast, good emphasis on security. Unfortunately, sundown is in sunset mode. Uh, I don't make this stuff up, it, it really is. Um, and I was concerned it would complicate the installation, which was part of why I decided to create uh, Frog, because you would need to somehow build or copy this, this C live. So I decided to write a markdown parser in Racket and um, I, I suck at writing parsers. I used way too many regular expressions, but through, <laughs> through sheer determination and many unit tests, like hundreds of them, I've fixed a lot of bugs. Uh, but this is by far the racket code that I am the least proud of writing. And if anyone here enjoys parsers and would love to write a, help write uh, a, a parser for Markdown, I have a great uh, picket fence that you might enjoy helping whitewash. Um, OK, using pigments, that was a little more interesting how to integrate with that. Uh, GitHub.com uses pigments to colorize and highlight source code on their website. And their first, uh, but GitHub is written in Ruby, Python is written in Python, uh, pigments is written in Python. So, uh, First version, they just shelled out and called the pigmentize command, which of course was reliable but slow. Uh, next, they came up with some system of embedding Python in Ruby, which was fast but kind of heavy and complicated. Um, and finally, they settled on just you know spinning up a Python process and doing a, a very simple text, uh, you know, almost telnet type of session back and forth. And uh, I started with the first approach and skipped directly to the third approach. And um, it's the simplest Python program in the world. If you want to take a look, you can, you can see it in the repo. Uh, fi almost finally, uh, there are a couple options in the Racket uh, world for doing blogging. One of them is Scriblogify by Ryan Culpepper. So if you want to write uh, your blog posts in Scribble and deploy them to Google Blogger, it's a very smooth experience. Uh, another is Bloggy by Jay McCarthy very focused on writing uh, posts in Scribble and deploying to a static website. And I think all three of these systems are, as they say, dog-fooded, meaning I think all three of us use them for our own blogs, so that, that's not a bad thing. If you would like to help with Frog, other than uh, the Markdown parser, um, there, there are some low-hanging uh, fruit types of things on, on the GitHub repo. Uh, I've gotten some pull requests. I'm happy to accept them. Uh, if you want to create a widget for, for, for something, for some web service that's not supported, um, that's, that's a pretty easy thing to do. And I've tried to avoid doing them myself in case anyone wanted to help. So in conclusion, that is Frog. Uh, this is the GitHub repo URL. If you have a phone that does QR codes, there's the QR code. And thank you very much. <laughs>